Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. We are waking up with watches this weekend and everything is for sale. Reach out to T Masso at thewatchbox.com for more information about any of these watches, prices, boxes, papers, accessories included. We are always looking to build inventory, buy, trade, or sell watches with us. We pay cash, we pay fast, no upper limit on value paid. We will buy your entire collection or facilitate a trade for a watch you are more likely to wear and enjoy. Reach out to Tmaso at thewatchbox.com to buy, trade, or sell. Today, we start off with a big piece. Rolex Daytona Everose Red Gold Diamond Indices. This one is triple pink, dial, case, and bracelet. It's remarkably massive with a solid gold case back, solid end links, solid center links, and a thick gauge red gold clasp. This is Rolex's Everose, rosier by virtue of more copper, and forever rosy by virtue of of more platinum. We have a fold in, fold out, five millimeter easy link, quick adjustment system. You can see that internally the clasp is polished. There's a little beak in the hook with a lift lock system that latches shut with spring loaded action. And then a second lock, the clamshell. So it's actually a double locked oyster clasp. Roll around the case. You can see trip lock crown in gold. You know that because it has two small dots flanking a big one. 100 meters water resistant on the dial side, tachymeter scale on a red gold bezel. We have a dial with a metallic sunburst in rose and then a lovely Beckett diamond diamond indices, a subtle and beautiful way to use gems on a man's watch. Rolex caliber 4130 with some of the best pusher feel and best column wheel feel in the business. Automatic winding, three-day power reserve, anti-magnetic, shock resistant, and a superlative chronometer. Time to run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per 24 hours from the factory. We'll throw this on my wrist. My wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. You can see it wears really nicely. A man can wear a Daytona, a lady can wear a Daytona at only 12.4 millimeters thick. It's nice and thin, which means this is your dress watch and your sports watch. A great Riviera, Mediterranean, LA, or Miami timepiece. Or if you want to be that guy with style in Frankfurt, London, Chicago, or New York, this is going to be the one for you. So let's jump from one colorful watch to another. This came out two years ago, and it was my favorite watch of the year. This is the Breitling Premier B09 Chronograph 40, better known as the pistachio. It's part of the Premier collection that came out in late 2018, but it's upgraded in a lot of ways because sometimes less is more. Less complexity. This one's a manual wind rather than an automatic. Less thickness because of the manual wind. Less clutter on the dial, which is a no date and less size because this is a 40 millimeter in steel. We have these lovely hybrid baton syringe style hands for the hours and minutes, a twin register, countersunk registers. You can see that there's a long distance billing marker for three minute intervals on the minutes register because back in the middle of the 20th century when the original premieres were in circulation at Breitling, three minute intervals would be used for billing long distance calls. Now this pistachio dial is something a little bit different. It's more metallic than it looks in photos. It's a little bit like the soft frost opaline that Patek Philippe uses on its watches. It's a different kind of green and one that's probably going to age well compared to the more conventional greens we've been seeing over the last two model years. We also have a dramatically boxed and cambered sapphire designed to look like a 1950s plexiglass. And then B09 is a B01 chrono without the winding system and the rotor. So we've got a column wheel for controlling function selection, and this is competitive with the Rolex and the Dotograph for best column wheel feel. It's a vertical clutch engagement system, so when you start it up, it always starts with a nice smooth action, no stagger or jump. Surprisingly, this is 100 meters water resistance, so on a different strap, you can absolutely take this swimming. A quick loom shot right here, you can see that we do have loomed hands, for the Breitling, and then before that we had the Rolex Daytona. That one has chromolite blue loom, but both of them do have loomed hands. The watch wears so easily, it's a real treat. Breitling, historically, or at least since 1983, has been known for big, bold, often Bentley-inspired watches, but this one right here is a beautiful fit. It feels like something that Omega might have made during the 1990s. Really good to look at, comfortable to wear, and a handsome all-arounder. This is a green that's going to age well. Now, speaking of Omega, we have a fantastic piece from Omega right here. This is the Omega Speedmaster Professional. Moonwatch Moonphase Skeleton Limited Edition, 42 millimeters in platinum. This came out in 2003, and it was made in 57 examples to celebrate the origin year of the Speedmaster line, and completely hand engraved and skeletonized. 
the work done by one of Omega's neighbors in the city of Bien, the late great Armin Strom. So all this work done by Armin Strom, this is what really sets Omega apart from Rolex. Both of them make conventional mass market watches, but Omega also does crazy things like skeletonization, uh, vintage re-editions, tourbillon watches. This right here is not something that Rolex will ever counter. If you want a Rolex like this, you have to go to Les Artes Saint de Genève. This watch is unbelievable. It is a moon watch, moon phase, which means it's a triple complicated also helps if you wind them and the watch has a chronograph a pointer style date and then it also has a moon face you can see on the reverse side we have caliber 3604 which is based on the 1866 movement in the moon watch moon face so still Lemania based distantly but now entirely hand decorated to a degree suitable for a vacheron you can even see some of the elements inside the skeletonized portions where Armin Strom has cut out the interior of for example the chronograph bridge you can see that sharp interior angles have been created where these internally beveled surfaces meet deeply impressive and artisanally crafted this is a truly handmade and hand finished watch from Omega the likes of which Rolex will never be able to counter. This is not the kind of watch that Rolex does. And again, bringing in the legacy of Armin Strom makes it even more appealing. On my wrist, you can see it is a large watch, 42 millimeters in diameter and about 48 millimeters from lug to lug. So I recommend you have a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to wear this, but it's not just a repose to Rolex. This is a shot across the bow of every high-end independent and Haute Horlogerie House, from Vacheron to Patek to AP to Langa. This is Omega at its best, a rare effort from a brand that's got a lot of soul, despite being part of the big group. All right. Speaking of Patek Philippe, we have two great ones here. So this is the Neptune Moon Phase. The Neptune collection came out in the mid-90s. This model here, the 5085 1A, is a rare example of a full integrated bracelet steel watch from Patek Philippe that's not an Aquanaut, a Ladies 24, or a Nautilus. So the model was made from 1998 through 2005. This is an original late 90s tritium dial, so when the lights go out, so does the dial. It's got a lovely black base. We have a Moon Phase coaxial with a pointer date, small seconds, power reserve up to 48 hours the bracelet like the watch is steel and integrated and the watch is thin it's just about 8.5 millimeters thick thanks to the micro rotor caliber 240 that sits inside this being 1990s Patek Philippe you can see it, it is Geneva hallmark rather than the later Patek seal free sprung with a gyro max style balance a three hertz beat rate and attractive finishing inside and out nicely made beautifully preserved this is a great example of a rare watch that many consider to be one to own for the future already a cult watch it's gaining more and more mainstream recognition it is a 37 if we just go by the diameter of the case but with the integration of the bracelet it wears a little larger than that so i encourage you to consider this more like a 40 millimeter round watch however it is compact and so i find it suitable for a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference and it is very very flat on the wrist that's the 5085 1A Neptune Moon Phase. More recently, Patek Philippe has upgraded its World Time collection to the 5230, and this is the 5230P, a platinum version of the 5230 that came out in 2022. We have a gradient dial in blue. The center is Roselay the Guilloche, which is beautiful, and then you can see from light at the center, it fades to dark outboard. You set your city of reference up at 12 o'clock, and as you can see, as I turn the time, the world time reference ring moves counterclockwise while the hour moves clockwise. Now the way this works is you've got 24 reference cities representing the 24 principal time zones of the world and you have 24 hours on this ring. A semicircle in silver representing the areas where roughly speaking it's day and then the blue is the nighttime. So you can see in Karachi, Pakistan, it is Four in the afternoon, and I know that because 16, not 4, is adjacent to Karachi. It's 4 a.m. in Denver. Now, let's say I want to move to celebrate the Battle of Midway on site. Well, I just adjust Midway to sit up at the top, and now you can see my local time is adjusted. It is midnight in Midway, and I can see that the little ring with the crescent of midnight matches the position of the hands. Now, I know it's not midday because midday would be down here in Paris, it's midday. In Dubai, it's 3 in the afternoon. In La Paz, it's 7 a.m. In Sydney, 
Well, you see what I'm saying? It's 9 o'clock at night. A very simple system. Louis Cotier designed this world time display uh, for many brands, including Vacheron and Patek during the 1930s. And then during the 50s, Patek patented a system for rapidly transferring from zone to zone. Now here we have a later version of the 240 micro rotor. I will say finish on more modern Patek Philippe watches is actually better than it was during the 80s and 90s and even early 2000s. Particularly when you get close to the parts, they're just a little bit better finished. That's not a knock in the old movements, it's just a sign of the times as the standards. As people buy high powered camera lenses and loops, the standards have changed. Now this has some changes over the 240 in the Neptune you just saw. The big change is the silicon hairspring, which is anti-magnetic. You combine the Patek Philippe seal with the Gyromax free sprung balance, a six, no longer five, but six position adjustment, and the silicon hairspring, all those things together mean Patek rate this watch as no worse than minus three plus two seconds per 24 hours from the factory. It's smaller than the older 5130, that was 39.5 millimeters. This in platinum with diamond between the lugs at six, this is 38.5 millimeters. So it's a nice fit. It's more suitable as a unisex option than the old 39.5. Also, you can see a big change from the 5130. Uh, that is the absence of a crown guard structure, which always made the 5130 look larger than it was. Also, we've done away with the 5130's blended and integrated Calatrava style lugs. Here you can see the lugs are broken out sharply from the case band for better definition. A really handsome looking watch with a wonderful Nubuck style suede strap and a contrasting stitch and a platinum folding clasp to match. Patek Philippe at its absolute best. Okay, so Patek, AP, and Vacheron are the traditional holy trinity. We're going to feature at least one from each brand. Back in 2019, Audemars Piguet realized that the Code 1159 might be a tough sell, so it released a bunch of Royal Oaks that year, just so we would forget about the underwhelming automatic and chronograph code 1159. And the return of the 38 millimeter chronograph was one of the features of that year. So this is the 38 millimeter chronograph. It has the Frederic Piguet automatic inside, vertical clutch, column wheel, automatic, fully integrated, ultra thin, high horology movement in a watch that is immaculately hand finished outside. The finishing of a Royal Oak case and bracelet takes over 11 hours, all components together. And you can see that the new Wants and the detail is second to none. Screw down crown, 50 meter water resistance, surface swimmable, and yes, this watch is well loomed. It is a sports watch. It features a light blue grand tapisserie dial. It is the large hobnail still cut on a pantograph and then a bezel that has been filled with brilliant cut diamonds. We also have the hexagonal bezel bolts in white gold and you can see that contrast subtly with the silver white of the case. The white gold is just a little bit warmer. 38 is very close to the size of the original Royal Oak chronograph which came out as a 39 millimeter watch in 1997. So this watch is very similar to the fit of the original and being a Royal Oak, it wears a little bit larger than its rated size, though this is a 38. I'd say it wears more like a 40 millimeter round watch. It is, however, quite thin. If you want the ultimate AP Royal Oak chronograph and you don't want to go with some gonzo complication or concept, sometimes smaller actually is better. And this watch is universally wearable by him or her. A dress watch, a sports watch, all in one, the only Audemars Piguet you will ever need because the Royal Oak is the definitive AP collection. Plus, you get that spectacular combination of bezel and dial. And the diamonds on this one, quite subtle. From arm's length, you barely notice them. It's not flamboyant. It doesn't look aftermarket. It wouldn't be welcome on 47th Street in New York, and I love that. Taking a look now at the other member of the Holy Trinity, Vacheron is often described as bringing up the rear compared to Patek and AP these days. The Richemont-owned Vacheron has suffered more from uneven product planning and execution and ineffective marketing, but that's not to say individual watches haven't been spectacular. What we have here is the Traditionnel Complete Calendar Open Face. This is a watch that came out in 2021, 41 millimeters in rose gold. It has this lovely open face dial 
move some fingerprints here. You can see there is the upper sapphire, which has a silkscreened Vacheron logo on its underside. Then there's another sapphire on which these cantilevered rose gold hour indices sit. And then there are two more sapphires, one disc for the day, one disc for the month. It is a triple calendar. It has a lunette-style moon that indicates the date, and then it has a photorealistic moon phase, and that's your moon phase display. So you have your day, your date, your month, your moon phase, all of it with the dial side mechanism, nickel anthracite coated invisible, superb, and easy to read, which is not universal on open worked or open wrought watches. You can see the half frosted Dauphine hands make it easier to tell the time. We also have on the reverse side, a nickel anthracite coated caliber 260 automatic movement, which despite the lack of a second sand on the dial side, does have hacking seconds. Geneva hallmark on the movement, Geneva hallmark on the case since 2012. It has been a whole watch standard. 40 hour power reserve, five position adjustment, Geneva hallmark finish, and again, that nickel anthracite coating, a nice dark contrast to the warmth of the rose gold. We'll throw the watch on the wrist, and by the way, the dial side finishing of these uh, module movement components, really outstanding. There's also a lovely guilloche rayon pattern, like a fan that spans from 9 o'clock to 3 o'clock across the top of the dial. On my wrist, it wears easily, it wears comfortably, it wears beautifully. I do think you need a wrist of at least 15 centimeters circumference to wear this, but it has an awful lot of presence and it's not excessively thick in spite of the profusion of complications and the automatic system. This is Vacheron proving it can still lock horns with Patek AP and for that matter, Longa and all of the independents. Deeply impressive and deeply desirable. But who says you have to spend a ton of money to get a memorable handcrafted watch? Not Grand Seiko. And in 2019, it launched what you see right here. It's SBGY-003. This is a special piece made in 700 examples. On the reverse side, you can see that it is a manual wind spring drive, the 9R31, handsomely finished, satination across the bridge. You can see case back power reserve, 72 hours. It's actually a twin mainspring, but it has two mainsprings in one barrel. And that barrel has been beautifully beveled and then solarized. Screws are blued, and you can see that they've reamed out and polished all of the jewel and the screw sinks. Flip it over to the dial side, and you can see that the watch is quite attractive, featuring what they call a radiant dial. A radiant dial simply means that we have this deeply grooved rayon pattern that's been stamped. Hands and indices all cut on micrometric diamond-tipped milling tools, manually placed. The case itself, at least the polished elements, hand-finished using the so-called Zaratsu finish that is a signature of Seiko and Grand Seiko. So this is a handmade dial, and this is a hand-finished case. Taking a quick look, you can see this is vintage-inspired. It's from the Elegance Collection, so it has a vintage Grand Seiko logo on the buckle as well as on the crown. It has a deploying clasp. It is a 38.5 millimeter diameter watch that's quite slender in profile just over 10 millimeters thick. This wears well on a smaller wrist, and you can see it is quite compact with the lugs coming nowhere near the edge of my wrist on either side. So this is one for a man or for a woman. You can confidently skip the likes of JLC, Zenith, Glasuta Original, maybe even the Holy Trinity when you put one of these on your wrist. And of course, being spring drive, it's accurate to 15 seconds a month, and it has that charismatic spring drive seconds hand sweep. No batteries, no capacitors, no motors. Spring drive is entirely mechanical motivation with a combination of a quartz oscillator waked up by a induced electrical current created by the unidirectional governing wheel. That induced electrical current wakes up the oscillator. The oscillator applies a magnetic braking force to slow down the unfurling of the energy from the barrel. So the drive of the seconds, minutes, and hours hands, all mechanical, and it is essentially mechanical soul with quartz accuracy, a technology still distinctive and exclusive of Grand Seiko and Seiko. I have two watches with bracelets. One of them by default is going to be the last watch, but I hold them in equal regard. While I love the Chronomet Optimum, I have to admit that my favorite Jorn is probably the Chronomet Holland & Holland from late 2017. Stainless steel, full factory stainless steel bracelet, optionally ordered. It is by no means standard on the Holland & Holland. What is standard on the Holland & Holland is beauty and exclusivity. Only 66 of these were made from two Holland & Holland firearm barrels. Uh, this one, as you can see on the reverse side, 
was barrel serial number, I believe it's 7182, and, or I think 7183, pardon me, and that was the 28 piece. So 28 dials were made from that 7183 barrel, and then there was another of which 28 dials were salvaged from the cut metal. Now, if you look carefully, you can actually see that there are lateral lines across the dial as the barrels were rolled flat and then cut up, and to create the circular dial, strips were laid down, almost like planks on the deck of a ship. Unlike the 39 millimeter chronomet blue here, we don't have the clutter of small seconds. This is a two-hand watch. You can see the Damascus pattern beautifully brown, almost like the Jorn Havana dials, but richer and more complex. Take a quick look, you can see that the hands in the dial printing are all actually cream colored. They're off white to make for a warmer contrast, a little bit more subtle with the brown of the dial. It is super thin. Again, this one with the optional bracelet. This is possibly a unique piece among the 28. Taking a quick look at the reverse side, you can see it's the same caliber 1304 that you find on the Chronomet Bleu as well as the Chronomet Souverain. And it is a 56 hour twin barrel, six position adjusted, manual wind, free sprung movement with solid gold bridges and plates. That is solid gold. And you can see that this one has been customized as the base plate has been engraved with Holland and Ampersand and Holland. Holland and Holland, of course, firearms makers to royalty. They are famous for their gun rooms in the world's major cities. They make double rifles, double shotguns, all sorts of commissioned art pieces, very high end. And this watch was a labor of love between FP and Holland and Holland. Let's throw it on the wrist. You can see this watch made from barrel 7183 is super flat. It's broader across the wrist than it would be if it didn't have the bracelet. Nevertheless, you're still going to find this watch amenable to wrists as small as 14 centimeters circumference. Super flat and in stainless steel, a watch you can wear every day. Steel on the outside, steel on the inside with those Damascus dials giving the watch a character and a presence unlike anything else in Jorn's past or present catalog. But we look to the distant past, 2001 to 2002, for the watch that will finish today's episode. This is the Alango Unzona Longa One Soiree. The Soiree was a special piece in white gold with mother of pearl dials. There were two different dial variants, the one you see here, which was smooth, and then a guilloche dial. There was also an option to have the watch on a strap or less commonly, a Wellendorf made factory integrated bracelet. And you could see these lugs have been welded on specifically to mate with the bracelet. These two things were designed together. Wellendorf is an upscale German jeweler that works in low volume on special craft projects. You could see the Wellendorf W symbol inside of the clasp. There are a couple of different ways to adjust this. You have several different locking points inside of the clasp. And then the bracelet is actually held together using removable links fixed by screws. So you have two different ways to adjust the fit of this. On a full bracelet, the Soiree, which is still 38.5 millimeters, is incredibly massive. You really feel the heft of this one. You could see that it wears far different from other Longa ones. Longa lugs are fairly generic and repetitive, so this is unusual in that it looks nothing like their conventional stepped out lugs. The mother of pearl dial, which is white polished mother of pearl, is of the highest grade with undertones that span the entire spectrum of colors. A deeply impressive watch. It would probably wear on a wrist as small as 13 and a half centimeters circumference. In fact, it wears better than the same watch on a strap. Taking a quick look at the case back, you can see one of the distinctive features of the Soiree is that it uses a unique movement called caliber L901.4. The dot four indicating that it has longer pinions for the hands, the power reserve, as well as the hour and the minute. So seconds, hour, minute, and the power reserve. Longer pinions for a thicker dial. So with mechanical changes made, we have a unique reference, the 9014. Still twin barrels, manual wind, three day power reserve, five position adjusted, and it does have a stop seconds function so you can set it precisely to a reference time. It also has a pusher, so you can rapidly cycle the date, which is a tactile pleasure in and of itself, much like a fine column wheel chronograph. Think dotograph, and you have the right idea. The movement is beautiful, beveled edges to the bridges, but also around the service access ports and the three-quarter bridge. Three-quarter bridge, German silver bridges and plates, golden jewels, fixed by screws. You can see the golden cup known as a chaton, holding the pivot jewel, fixed in place by blued screws, but we also have polished screws here. You can see we have a sharp interior angle in steel, no less, atop the 
escape wheel. You can see the cap to the escape wheel cock is polished steel, black polished, with a sharp interior angle. We also have a black polished swan's neck fine adjustment mechanism. Deeply impressive artisanally. It's also freehand engraved on the balance cock. This is as good as it gets from one of the greatest in the business. And again, it was only made from 2001 to 2002, so every version of the soiree is rare. This one with the smooth dial and the integrated bracelet, incredibly scarce. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.